Hey guys, what is going on? Good morning, uh, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. It is currently Wednesday morning, December 20th, 2023. And we're going to do a very, very basic green spawn inoculation video. So if you guys like this kind of stuff, make sure you subscribe to the channel. If we're just getting started out, it'd be really helpful. Uh, if you hit like, it helps more people see the video as well. But anyways, let's get straight to it. So what are we doing today? We are inoculating a grain bag. Now, if you've been doing this kind of stuff for a long time, you don't need any explanation. This video might not be so much for you. We're going to go over like, hey, what is this? What is this? How do these go together? Um, this is meant for people who are like really trying to wrap their heads around just the basics of what's going on here. So, first of all, let's talk about what this is. So, I mean, it's pretty obvious that it is corn in a bag. You may be wondering what this is. You may be wondering what this is. So let's talk about the main idea of why we have corn in a bag. So we're trying to grow mushrooms, right? The mushrooms come from fungus. So all of that white mycelial stuff, it usually grows in the ground under trees. That's what a fungus is. And it produces these mushrooms as fruiting bodies so it can drop the spores and then the spores, you know, go wherever, land, germinate, that white mycelium grows out again, and then the process starts over and over again. That's the life cycle of fungus. So what we have in here is a little bit of that white mycelial fungus. This is a, a research culture we got from Colorado Cultures for microscopy use only here. Um, here in Colorado, it is perfectly legal to grow and own your own, um, psychedelic mushrooms, but, uh, I even get scared saying that out loud on YouTube because uh, I don't know how they're going to feel about videos like this. So we will see, but, uh, anyways, we need to get this onto here and that's going to give the fungus an environment to live in and it's also going to give the fungus food it, it really loves high nitrogen food there's a lot of nitrogen in this popcorn so kind of a match made in heaven it's it just it's gonna have a nice sterile place to live and grow and spread out over this popcorn so that's the idea between what this is and what this is later on down the road once this is fully colonized it's going to look completely white um, it's going to get mixed into another type of substrate that isn't really a nutritious substrate it's more meant to allow the environment for the fruiting bodies to occur um, a lot of people use coco core or they mix coco core and vermiculite coco core vermiculite and gypsum Really, all you need is core, but here in Colorado, I like to use core and vermiculite just because the vermiculite, you know, helps hold that moisture in a little bit better. Anyways, I'm going to get straight to putting this in here because that is step one if you want to cultivate. Um, and you need to do it correctly because this has been pre-sterilized. And uh, this is this is a filter patch. I guess I should go over this too. This has little teeny tiny holes all over it. These holes are 0.2 microns um, in width, I guess, diameter. Uh, nothing is going to pass through that filter that can reproduce on this corn. Uh, no biological life <laughs> is going to get through here, but it is going to allow for the exchange of oxygen, CO2, things like that. Once this goes in here, because 
it's going to start needing that gas exchange for its own biological processes. So this filter patch helps get fresh air in there or push the stale air out. So that's what that is. This is a injection port, uh, technically called a SHIP, S-H-I-P, self-healing injection port. So the idea behind this is all you got to do is stick it on this bag and you can put a needle through it, access the insides of the bag, and then when you pull that needle back out, it's going to self-heal. Um, whatever this material is, I'm not sure what it is, but it's going to close up that hole and nothing is going to be able to enter into this bag from where that needle hole was in the first place. So this thing is protecting uh, that hole that you're going to make in the bag. You don't need to worry about covering this with tape or anything. Just be nice to it. You don't want to knock it off. It's on there pretty good, but yeah. So that's, that's what the stuff is, guys. We got the corn, we got the injection port, we got the filter. All of this is sealed up. Um, it's been sterilized. Now we got to get this in here. So I'm, I've got this nice metal surface here. I'm wearing gloves. I washed my hands before I wore the gloves. We don't want anything but the fungus growing in here. So we need to be really, really clean when we're putting this in the corn. And uh, so starting out, I'm already wearing gloves. I'm gonna spray the surface that we're gonna be working on here. I'm gonna spray my own gloves. I mean, you really, at this point, especially if you're a beginner, you can't be too careful with how much isopropyl you're using. Make sure you're not using it on any wooden surfaces though, because it will leave a nasty stain. You do not want that. Um, another thing to think about is I haven't had the air going on in here. You know, I turned off the heater. I haven't had a fan or anything. It's a pretty still air environment in here. So I'm not gonna worry about using a still air box or anything. I'm just trying to be really, really clean in this room here on this nice clean surface i'm going to even spray the bag i mean really you just need to sanitize this area right here but you can't be too careful it'll give you peace of mind the more stuff you, <laughs> you sanitize you don't want to get that filter patch too wet but i mean really it's not the end of the world if you do. So, I'm just cleaning all this off. But, I mean, I'm just gonna soak the front right there. Because I know that that's what we're gonna be going into here in just a few minutes, a few seconds. I'm gonna spray this guy, because I'm about to open it. I just want everything clean here because what's inside of here should be clean um i'm sure that they were working in front of a flow hood when they pulled this culture out into the syringe so what's inside of here the needle is already sterile so once i open up that needle i know that i need to get it into this bag because I don't want anything that's floating around in the air out here to land on this open needle because then I risk the, the chance of transferring that into here. So let's uh let's do this guys. Let's let's get this in here. I'm not gonna talk or anything, I'm just gonna do it. Uh because this is the most important part. I just want to be very focused and clean. And I can't get this open, so it doesn't help when you're wearing nitrile gloves and you're soaking wet in isopropyl. I'm trying to find some scissors here. Oh, 
And of course, whenever you need scissors, um, they're not going to be available. It's just one of the rules of life. So I'm going to use one of these little blades here. These are already sterile, so that helps. Um, be very, very careful if you're ever doing anything with these blades. These are dangerously sharp, like really dangerous. So just for the sake of getting this video done though, I need to uh, open this. You always want to dispose of these properly. Get one of these little disposable blade removers. I mean, never leave these laying around, guys. Never, ever, ever. All right. Got that done. I'm gonna give myself one more spray here. So I've been touching some other things. All right, um, we are 12 minutes into the video. It took me that long to get to this point. So uh, <laughs> you've been waiting for me to do that. Uh, if the full 12 minutes, I apologize. But uh, let's get this guy back on there. I didn't need to use the full 10, so I just went for about five. Now I've got this left over again. Um, I guess I could throw it back in here, but uh, can't really. Like seal it back. I, I have a sealer. I can at least heat seal it. So there you have it. It's been injected. You can see it. It's all gone down in there. I like to even pre-mix it. Way it's not all just pulling at the bottom. Just gonna have some more inoculation points than it normally would have. All right, so I'm gonna pull out a few bags now that have been colonized a while back. Put this guy away. Now, this is an example of culture, <clears throat> culture that's been growing out for, honestly, this has been going for about a month. I should have broken this up a long time ago, but I've kind of been thinking about making this video, so I wanted to show this is what it looks like not doing a break and shake or anything. I threw an agar wedge up here, basically the same thing I did. Um, threw some fungus in there and it's propagated out. So this is the process of it propagating out. And if I were to take this and break it all up, which I mean, I'll even do that right now. So, break and shake, get it all distributed nice and evenly. And what I'm going to have in about...
about a week or two is this nice, evenly distributed, fully colonized bag. So this is what we're looking for. This is the ideal end result. Um, this is about ready to get put into bulk substrate, which if you don't know what that is, don't worry. It's not really what this video is about, but this is, this is what you want from this to this. And you can achieve that by just having the right materials, getting the right culture, having sterile procedure, getting the culture in the bag so that it can live and feed on this corn. So, well guys, we're, we're past the 16 minute mark. Um, I can't believe I've taken this long just to explain grain bag inoculation, but, uh, I <laughs> just decided to make a video today, so this is what it's going to be, and I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. If you made it this far, you're, you are a trooper. Thanks for sticking with me, but uh, anyways, guys, yeah, make sure to like, subscribe, and uh, I will see you in the next video.